Hello and welcome everyone. Today I will show you how to create this WebXR golf game that you're seeing right now using Wonderland Engine. And don't worry, this tutorial is bigger and friendly. We will be coding in JavaScript, but even if you have no experience in programming, you will be able to follow along. Don't worry about it. So now, let's get started. So an overview. This course will be split into four parts. In the first part, you will learn how to create a new project, user interface and navigation through the editor, change sky, create meshes as a placeholders for the golf club and the ball, add physics interaction, play your game in WebXR, in our case we will see that in PC and virtual reality, tweak the physics settings of the ball, and finally add trail effect to the ball. A lot of things to cover, pretty excited? Let's start with the first one creating a new project. First, let's open Wonderland Engine. Here I have version 1.1.0, but any version will work. This is the latest version I have. First, we will go to a new project. Let's choose VR because we will create a VR template and let's rename the game that we want to create, Golf Tutorial. We can here choose the default path or we can choose another path that we want. Let's press create. Now this is our default project here. And to move around you hold the right mouse button and WASD on your keyboard. If you want to have faster camera movement you can increase that and now you can move faster. Here in the center we have objects in the viewport. On the left side we have the scene outline. All the objects that we have exist here. So we have the cube here, we have the light, we have the cone, sphere, and all of this stuff. And we have the panel here to have a little code can press on it and this button will be pressed. If you select an object in the scene view in the center, you will see its properties on the right. If you unfold the mesh section, you can edit the mesh and material properties of this component. The material is pink, we can change the material to yellow for example, or pink for example again. And the mesh is cube, we can change it to anything like sphere, and let's go back to cube. And up, we have our translation. We can move our object from it, or we can move it from the gizmo in the viewport. Ctrl Z of course moves everything back. On the bottom left, we have the asset browser. It shows folders on the left side and files on the right side. For example, our JavaScript folder, we will put all our codes in it. First of all, let's change the sky. Let's make it a little brighter. So up on the left side, we will go to views, project settings, and that will open the project settings panel in the right side here. We will scroll down until we find rendering. Under it, we'll find the sky. We will press enable. Then we will choose a material for our sky but we don't have a sky material yet, so we will create one. Go to views, resources, here you will find all the resources that this current project runs on. Like for example, here are all the meshes that this project have, the images, textures, shaders, materials, we want the materials. So up on the right, we will press on create to create a new material. Scroll down to see our new material that was created. Double click on its name to rename it. Let's rename it sky. And next to material name, we have the material pipeline. We will press on it and select sky pipeline. You can find all the pipelines that exist in the project from the pipelines tab. We can press on any pipeline to change its settings. For example, here's the sky pipeline settings that we have selected for our material. Now from the project settings, let's set the material of our sky to the new material that we've created. But right now, our sky material needs texture because that's the current settings of the sky pipeline. But for now, we want the sky to be gradient instead. So from the sky pipeline settings, we will unselect textured and select gradient instead. See, now we have our bright sky. We can change its colors from here and we can make it any color we want. Ta -ta 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 -ta, let's make it the default one. Wonderful. So now let's create our golf club or a placeholder of it. First of all, we'll right click on our scene root and add mesh objects. We'll go to properties, we will name it Golf Club. Click on the mesh component to expand its properties. We'll choose the mesh cylinder and we'll choose the material of it. Uh, let's do it dark material. Perfect. We press S to scale it from the gizmo. Scale it from up, scale it from up again. And we can scale it from the properties panel too. And now we have this thick shape. And I will change the material to like green. Select the object in the scene outline. Right click on it, duplicate. And now we have our duplicated object and we'll change the mesh. This time we want a cube. We will scale it in this shape, perfect. So now we have like our golf club placeholder. This will be really good enough for now. We will put it as a child and parent it by drag and dropping it so that the child moves with the parent. 
Now we want to make it follow the player's hand. So this is the player's hand. It will be here. But this one is like for the hand tracking. We will not be doing hand tracking right now. We want just controllers of the VR headset by itself. So we'll go to controller left. This is controller left. This is controller right. And this is the motor. It exists in the hierarchy. Let's put it in the controller right because I'm right handed. So we can switch it anytime if we want. Now it will be parented to control right. So when the control right moves or the player hands moves, this stick will be moving with it. We can reset its location so it snaps back to its parent's location. And let's change its rotation because it will be like pointing straight forward. So we'll do that. And I'm pressing control so that it snaps without pressing control with press control. See, it snaps 30 degrees here. Now we have our placeholder golf club. Now let's create our placeholder ball. We want to create a golf ball by duplicating the sphere. To duplicate objects, right click on the object and select duplicate or press ctrl D. We need to move it aside with the translation gizmo, which we can select with G, G for grab. Finally, we want to scale it down to the size of a golf ball by selecting the scale gizmo with the S key, S for scale, or we can scale it from the properties on the right side. For organization, let's rename the object from the properties tab. Finally, let's change the color. Finding the mesh component on the right, we can change the diffuse color to yellow. Now we have our golf club placeholder and we have our ball placeholder but we want them to interact with each other so how we will do that by using physics physics is cool so we'll use it we'll go to project settings we'll enable the physics now we have physics enabled we will add component to our ball here here we'll have all the components that exists by default in wonderland engine so we'll choose the physics components and of course you can add your components here and that's what we'll do later in the tutorial we have added the physics components we will make its size the same as the sphere so we can change its shape so we have like box shape plane shape but we want the sphere shape and we'll change its size to the ball size so now we have our physics ball we don't want it to be static so we remove it and we want to apply gravity on it and we don't want it to be kinematic right now we will see all the settings later on these these are the important settings right now that we want we want to simulate the physics so press here to simulate the physics and you see Whee! press it again to unsimulate press it again it falls again beautiful so we want a floor a physics floor so that the ball when when it falls it doesn't fall down like that and so we will go to root create another object and this time we want a physics object we'll call it floor physics we'll choose the shape to be plane why because plane is like infinite floor so we want it but it's rotated so we we'll rotate it 90 degrees and here we have it we'll make it static it's static by default so it's cool and we want it static for it to not fall down so now let's simulate okay it falls again why? Because we've rotated it in the wrong direction. So instead of minus 90 like we did, we want it to be positive 90. We'll go there. When we simulate again right now, it falls on the floor. Now, how can we make the golf pad interact with our ball? Well, simply by putting physics into our golf club. Go here, physics. We'll choose the shape to be box. And, and you can press control to scale it slowly. And we do that to be more precise. This time, we were not going to have gravity because we don't want our golf club to fall from our hand by the gravity and we'll turn on kinematic because we want our golf club to move with the hand without turning on kinematic it will not gonna move and we do the same with the golf club extension we choose box we scale it we can like increase it a little bit more than this shape why to give like more freedom like if the player misses the shot we like be more gentle to the player we like we give the player more chance to hit the ball. Now we have our physics. We turn off the gravity and we turn on the kinematic. We can simply hit our ball with our golf club. Why? Because both have physics. First, we can test it by pressing start here and it will open our game in the browser. Our golf club is hidden. Why? Because we're not in the VR. We're on PC right now. It will only appear while we are in VR. Because if we go here and we go to controller right, we'll find this component here, VR mode active switch. This component, this controller right, will be activated only in VR and it will affect all the children. Without this component, like we'll deactivate it and we will press start again. This is our controller. It appears in the PC and this is our golf club. We can see it because it's straight if we rotated it save like all package when i press ctrl s it saves and at the same time it packages and when we package it's like updating the game when i press enter here it will be updated and you see it's rotated like that let's go back ctrl z 
and let's go here control z to activate it again so to enter vr simply put your usb cable type c to your pc and when you do that, as in your VR headset to allow the connection, you will press allow. That's it. And remember that you need to enable developer mode on the headset. Otherwise, the dialog will not appear. And here, instead of local device, which is our PC, you will choose the MetaQuest device or whatever your device. Choose it and press play. It started in the browser of your VR headset. Press this VR button to enter the game. Right now, this is my controller and this is my golf pad placeholder. And this is the ball. See, you can touch it. It's beautiful. It went away. Far, far away. Reload. And you will find yourself here again. And we can have like our ball here and we can shoot. For, from right now, it's it's pretty fun actually. And this is our button. So right now, we like, we moved very, very far place. The game starts to shape pretty well. We have a problem here. So the ball goes very far away when we hit it. So we want to slow it down. We want it to be like more harsh, to not go far away when we hit it. How to do that? I will show you. To slow down the ball's physics, we simply play with the physics settings. We will go to linear damping, and linear damping and angular damping, the damping in general, makes the physics object go slower. So we can like, for example, increase it to 20, for example. In any program, when I want to test what things does, I just like increase its value, see what it does, and then decrease it again to know what exactly it does. So you see, it makes the ball fall like that, very slow. And when you shoot it, really, really slow. And it's rotating really fast. Why? Because we have it changed the angular damping. You can create a whole new game out of that, actually. When we decrease it, to a suitable number like 1.5 this is this is perfect for me and we do the same with angular we pack it we'll see it now now it's perfect it's not going far away like it used to so now let's do something that is really really fun let's add a following trail to our ball and like you're seeing it it's really beautiful it polishes the experience really good let's add it why because i love it while we have the object selected we go to the right panel and we press add component we will find all of our components in the fields below search for trail component and we select it to add it to our ball object and then all what we'll do choose the material we have a yellow material here so we'll choose the yellow material you can play with the settings here but like this settings is really good but like you'll see it right now we'll go to our vr headset shoot it how beautiful is it but the problem here is that it, it renders only in one face it renders from here the first face but it doesn't render from here so we don't see it from here how to fix that simply by changing the pipeline of this material so if you go to the settings like we press this arrow we will see more settings about this material so we have the pipeline here it's foam opaque so we will go to views, resources, pipelines, we will go to Fungo Opaque and we can just enable double sided. But that will make all the materials that uses Fungo Opaque pipeline to render in both sides, which is not preferred for optimization as we only need it for our trail material. And so we will right click, duplicate the Fungo Opaque pipeline, rename it and enable the double sided for the new pipeline. And then we just set our trail materials pipeline to our new double sided Fungo Opaque. Control S to save, go again to the game, and you see it. It renders from both sides right now. It looks beautiful. Now let's customize it a little bit. Let's decrease the width, for example. Go to the properties of the trail, and we'll make the interval and the width. Let's test it. You see? Now it's good. We now have our following trail. Hey!